Dear friends, uh, I've been long time off from the YouTube because you know that I really have to do all my other academic works, which is not my key job. But uh, I promised after giving you the proofs from the book uh, review that I'll also speak about one of the proofs of the infinity of prime. This is a part of my NPTEL course on calculus of one real variable, but a lot of people wrote to me that they possibly had not understood the proof there or maybe I have not spoken properly or whatever. So I am trying to uh, give a proof. It is the second proof among the six proofs given in proofs from the book. The first proof is obviously of Euclid's own proof of the infinity of primes. So, but here the second proof beautifully uses what is called the farmer's numbers. So it is for any n, f of n is 2 to the power 2n plus 1. So this is called the Fermat's number. So you can try out for some little part. If zero is three, if one is five, if two is seventeen, if three is two fifty seven. It goes on. So you see, all these numbers are odd. These kind of odd numbers. So, if, so what is the key observation? The key observation is every Fermat's number, Fermat's number, is odd. It is very natural because this will be an even number plus one, so it will be odd number. So this is always even, two to the two to the power n. So Fermat's number is odd. So one of the thing that one has to observe that if I take the product of the first, means I have to multiply the first n Fermat's number. k equal to 0 to n minus 1 say. So that okay. so it start from 0 to n, so n minus 1. So the n farmers number, the first n farmers number, the f0 to fn minus 1. If I do that, that will turn out to be fn minus 2. Now this can be done through induction. So I will not get into the proof of this. So here my whole goal is to just give a sketch. So so by induction you can prove this. So you can try out the first few terms and then you can prove it by induction. So this now it is important to understand and this is a crucial step that every pair every pair of Fermat's number is co-prime. Co-prime. Co-prime means the only common factor that these two numbers have, any two numbers have, is one. It cannot have any other common factor than one. So let us now look at this. So how how it is true? And is it really true? Right. So you take k strictly less than n. and take fk, whatever be your k, and take n, fk and fn. So we will take and then say, suppose this fk and fn, so I am taking a pair, so up to n, I am trying to see that each pair has a, uh, you know, is co-prime. So you take any k, at, you, you can actually start from n equal to 1 and k with 0 and this way. So, and you can go on, n equal to 1 and n equal to 2. So, then you, so you can do 0 and 1. So, you take any pair, any fk and fn. Now then, by what you have achieved here, you will write here, you will observe that 
that suppose these are not co-prime, then they must have another common divisor other than one. So let that divisor be M. So let let that they let M be the common divisor. Now if M is a common divisor, it's very important to understand that if it divides one of the FKs here, it divides this whole product. So it has to divide this side completely, no remainder. So it must divide 2. So M must divide 2. So means, what is, so who can be the divisors of 2? Either 1 or 2, nothing else. So M must be, so M must be, be 1 or 2. But as Fk and Fn are both odd, they cannot be divided by 2. So they, they must have common factor 1. So since Fk, since Fk and Fn are odd, M is equal to 1. Now the key idea is that every now you see as I start from n equal to 0 and go down, so there are infinite such prime, sorry, such Fermat's number. Now every number, every odd number, any integer basically, has a prime factor other than 1, which has a prime, prime factor, only factor is 1, because 1 is not a prime number. So every other number, because here it starts from 3, has a prime factor. So if 3 has a prime factor, that same prime factor cannot be a factor of 5. It's some other number has to be there, it's other prime number. So thus these two numbers cannot come anywhere in the remaining part, because then there will be a common factor. So there will be infinite size primes then. So that proves the infinity of primes and I consider this to be one of the most fascinating and beautiful proofs. So I hope you enjoyed this and I would leave this to, as an exercise in induction. I have already written in the show to have a check for yourself. It's pretty simple. It's just try out for, say that this 2 for n minus 1 and try out for n. So, thank you. All the best. And I have uh, my two students uh, helping me out here. Uh, so, Devargo and uh, our friend uh, <laughs> Aditya. So, uh, it happens. So anyway friends, have a good time. I'll come back again. Next time we'll discuss about how you should prepare for your in, rather entrance exams for your bachelor courses and in mathematics and master's courses. Thank you very much.